Hello, hello everyone. So for today's uh, presentation, I will be talking about golf and trying to understand what different factors determine lower scoring in golf. And so we'll be doing this by looking at the old adage, drive for show, putt for dough, and trying to really challenge it and wrestle with it to test to see if it really does still hold water. So what is drive for show and putt for dough? Essentially, the philosophy and the idea behind drive for show and putt for dough is that you can hit the ball a long, long, long ways, but it's all going to be for show, especially when it's not accurate. And when you're hitting it all over the map, you are always going to score worse than someone who hits the ball straight, puts it in the, puts it on the green and makes a lot of putts. And so it essentially is an adage that tells you that the closer you are to the green, the more important the shot is for your scoring. And it tells you that you can always get better at golf by improving your putting. Whereas if you improve your driving, it's not a guarantee that you will shoot lower scores. And so Bryson DeChambeau really put this to the test. Um, he's a professional golfer, and he's the reason that we are having this power versus precision debate in the golf world right now. And that is because, as you can see in the images to the right here, the image on the left is Bryson DeChambeau pre-pandemic, and this is Bryson DeChambeau on the right post-pandemic. And as you can see, he's gained a lot of muscle, and he gained around 20 yards of driving distance, completely changing his philosophy, telling, saying that I'm no longer going to play golf for accuracy or for fairways. I'm going to hit the ball damn near as hard as I can and hit the ball in the green from there because the closer I am to the green, the better shot I have of shooting a lower score and making birdies. He coined this his bomb and gouge technique. And bomb and gouge was something that was very, very wearily seen in the golfing world, just like anything, anyone that takes a big risk in a field, it's always going to be a little bit, you know, suspect at the, at the beginning. However, this all sort of dissolved when Bryson absolutely dominated the field at the U.S. Open in 2020, which was one of the first major tournaments after the pandemic. He came out and he hit the ball further than anyone else, and he won by eight shots. And so now the golfing world has taken notice. They want to really understand whether or not, you know, you can just improve your, improve your scoring just purely by improving driving distance, because this was something that was always believed to be an overrated skill in terms of the golfing world. And so in order to really put this to the test, we are going to look at a couple of regression analyses. And what a regression analysis is, is it's a statistical method which attempts to explain how highly the selected independent variables correlate with dependent variables. So what that means is in our analysis today, we have our de dependent variable of earnings, career earnings. And that is going to be yearly earnings, which is going to be reflective of scoring, right? Because on the BGA tour, the lower you score, the higher you earn on a very general basis. And so in, this, in these analyses, we want to understand how variables like putts, driving distance, and accuracy determine those earnings. So how much of that, of that pie that is the career, that is the PGA Tour earnings is made up of driving distance, putts, and accuracy. And so the first regression analysis we're gonna look at is one done by Kern Alexander in 2005. They use variables such as driving accuracy, putts for green regulation, and driving distance. And putts, a green regulation is essentially the amount of times that a golfer is putting for a birdie in a round of golf. And so when we look at the margin from these results that they, that they got, you see that a 10% increase in driving distance leads to a $117,000 increase in earnings. And so this is a, a high and significant number, which again, goes to show that increasing driving distance can in fact, potentially improve, improve scoring. However, what's important here, what, one of the very important factors in this is that having one less putt per round, just one less putt leads to a $319,000 increase on average per year. That's, a, that's by far the most important and influential aspect in terms of this regression analysis, in terms of scoring. And that tells you that putt for dough is most certainly still valid and we still do make up a lot of our strokes on the greens. So after Kern and Alexander did their regression analysis, they did their analysis on uh, data from 1991 to 2000. And since then, there have been a lot, there's been a lot of new technology with launch monitors, which allow us to determine optimal launch conditions and use physics to our advantage in order to improve consistency and distance of all golfers without changing anything in their bodies or their swing. And so I wanted to look at another regression analysis from a later time period so that we could really understand how technology has impacted, if technology at all has impacted this debate and whether or not making it easier to find more distance has lessened the uh, impact of hitting the ball further. And so in order to understand this, we look at a, another regression analysis done in 2012 by Michael Lutz. He repeated Kern Alexander's regression with a couple of small caveats, one being that he used strokes gained putting instead of putts for GIR, which is strokes gained is essentially how many strokes you gain on the field in that specific category per round. So if I have a two plus 2.0 strokes gained putting, that means on average per round, I gain two strokes 
putting on the rest of the field. And this is a statistic that's a little bit more clear cut in terms of estimating uh, how much putting is really impacting our scoring as opposed to putts per GIR. And so once again, they found very similar results to, uh, to Kern and Alexander with one big caveat and that's driving accuracy was not significant in their regression, meaning it did not significantly impact um, the earnings of a PGA Tour professional. So uh, conclusively with all of these results that we've seen, we see that Bryson DeChambeau most certainly does have merit in his bomb and gouge technique. However, there is also still merit in drive for show and putt for doubt. I think that realistically, according to all of the analyses that have been done, putting is still by far the most influential aspect in terms of golf. However, driving can also be a very, very easy and quick way to gain distance to to lower scores because gaining distance can be done purely by getting stronger and not really changing anything of your swing or your game just hitting the ball further is proving to is, has been proven by Bryson and these analyses to lower your scores so yeah I mean it's a very very interesting debate and I think that Bryson DeChambeau really really brought to the forefront what could be done in terms of in terms of golf and in terms of thinking about the way in which we we think about the game thank you